Hi, good morning. Um, in this video, this is a logic video on propositional logic, and I'm Mark Thorsby. Um, in this video, we'll be s discussing what truth tables for propositions look like and how you can classify truth tables uh, based, I'm sorry, how you can classify those propositions based upon the truth tables. Um, if And then we'll s also go forward and we'll talk about truth tables for arguments. And then if we get a chance, we'll talk about indirect truth tables. So that's what we're sort of talking about in the next video in the next series of videos um, so and one other announcement for those of you who are interested um, the think factory it's a colloquium forum discussion put on the, by the philosophy department of Lone Star College rethinking the concept of power it's on October 27 2010 uh, from 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, we're talking to be given the fact that we're in an election cycle we're getting together a number of interesting guests uh, from sociology and economics and philosophy to discuss the question of what does power mean exactly, especially given the election cycle we're going through. So if you're interested in that, I encourage you to come and join us. Um, but anyway, let's get down to the brass tacks here. Uh, and since this is these are on YouTube videos, we're gonna our video segments are cut down to about 10 minutes apiece. Um, so let's go ahead into it and talk about truth tables for propositions. Let me move my um, video screen here. Okay. Um, so what we're going to be discussing today is the notion of truth tables for propositions in propositional logic. The first thing I want to introduce you to here is the equation for determining the number of lines, um, uh, the equation for the number of lines on a truth table. I'll just put TT here for truth table. So the equation is this. L equals 2 to the nth power, where n refers to the number of variables. Uh, let me move this over. Okay, so let me give you an example here. Let's say we take uh, a 3. Let's say we do A and B um, or C, right? So here we have three variables, and you can notice from the equation here is that since the equation is 2 to the nth power, it will always be an even number, uh, which is helpful actually, and you'll see why in just a moment. So let's go sort of use this as an example. That means, let's move it over here, if I have 3, that means L here is equal to 2 to the third power, right? What is 2 to the third power? Um, 2 is right. For those of you who don't know math very well, that's 4 times 2, which is 8, right? So it's L, the number of lines is 8. So, okay, so how are we going to do this? Let me m scroll over here and rewrite my thing, because I'm going to need a little bit longer here. So we had A and B or C. So essentially the way you want to start, because it's an even line, for each variable, uh, you'll essentially divide it in half. We have eight lines, so the first four here are going to be true, and the second four are going to be false. Okay, and then in my B here, what I'm going to do is I'm essentially going to take these four and then divide those in half, and so that way I get true, true, false, false. Do you see how that worked here? Whereas these are all true, half of these are true and half of these are false, and then I'll just do the same here where you get true, true, false, false and then I'll just do the same thing again except I'll divide these in half so I get true false true false true false true false okay so once I've done this I've now exhausted the truth possibilities for this this particular equation which means that all of these lines this table that I've developed signifies all the possibilities uh, in which either A is true, B is false, or C is either in which A is true or false, B is true or false, or C is true or false, and these are all of the possible combinations. Okay, and so once you develop, that's essentially how you develop a truth table. Um, the thing to keep in mind is oftentimes in a proposition, you'll have other, you'll see variables used multiple times, the same variable used multiple times. What you need to do in that case is make sure that you always use the same uh, layout here. So if I have another A for instance, I need to make sure it's true, 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 
false, 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 false. <coughs> Pardon me. So that's essentially how we do it. Once we have the truth table in, then we can use our rules for understate for deter, our rules for these operations that we discussed in our last lesson. If you'll recall, A and B, the conjunction here, can only be true when both of these values are true. So then I can just fill in the values here. So you have true, uh, true, false, 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 right? Um, so that's now the sort of truth values for this this section here. And now, okay, so this is what, here's what you have to begin doing. It, to be honest, it's sort of difficult to explain, so I feel like the best way to do it is just to jump in and show you a few problems, and you'll start to get a sense of it. So, uh, now if, now what I need to do is, let me see if I can change my color here. Um, let's see. So, for instance, now what I need to do is, whoops, yeah, let's just use that color. So, now what I want to do is I want to take this line here, and I want to compare it with this, I'm sorry, compare this column here with this column, right? Because this is the main operator of the parenthetical proposition here, um, utilizing this rule. So let me switch here back to my black. So true, if you remember the rule for disjunction is only one of them has to be true in order for it to be true. So this is true, right? This is true true, false, right, because here I have a false and a false, and then this is true, false, true, false, okay? And now once I've done that, since the main operator of the entire equation here was this, this operator right here, this disjunction, this is my final truth value for this proposition, or this is my final set of truth propositions. So this statement, A and B or C, uh, ultimately, these are all the possibilities for this statement as a whole, this propositional statement as a whole. Either it's true, it's true, it's true, it's false, it's true, it's false, it's true, it's false. Those are all of the possibilities. You're probably wondering at this point, well, why does it matter? Why do we want to do this? But you'll see in a moment because uh, when we build out here and we talk about two different propositions, two different propositional statements, using these values that I've sort of circled here in green, we can begin to classify the statements and understand how they work. So let me give you one more problem here and then since we're running out of YouTube time, I will probably just post another video keeping with the discussion. Uh, let me give you another example here. Um, let's say I want to do this proposition, um, A or the negation of B, right? Let's put parentheses around that and then conditional B. So this essentially is A or not B, therefore B. Now, the first thing to ask yourself is how many lines do I need? You can utilize your equation. I have two different variables, even though there's two instances of B, there's only two variables, A and B. Now, two to the second power is four, so that means I need four lines. And you'll see that for most of our homework exercises, we're only going to be doing, at most, four variables. Cause, because as you notice in the equation, it's exponential, so <laughs> once you put in something higher than five or something, it's a very, very long uh, truth table. Certainly not one that I could do on the video screen here. So let's start it. Remember, always be consistent. So let's start with A is true, 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 whoops, true, false, true, false. For a second there, I sort of screwed up. So, because it's only four lines. And then this is just true, false, true, false. Remember, I need to be consistent with my B, so this would be true, false, true, false. Okay? Now what I need to do is I need to begin to work my way to um, building out the operations. Now, essentially, the rules always start with the parentheses. Um, but you have, before you start, you have to isolate what the main operator is, and that'll tell you where you want to end up. In this case, it's the conditional. Um, so let me start with B, right? Because I have to do the negation before I get to the disjunction. Then I can move to the conditional. So the, ne the rule for the negation is it's just the opposite truth value. So that's false true, false, true. And then the rule for disjunction, as we mentioned before, 
is um and maybe I'll here I'll try to change my colors as I go so that way you can sort of keep it separate. The rule for disjunction is one of them has to be true. So this is true, true, false, true. Um, and now I want to move out to my my final ver my final conditional here, which is right here, my final operator, utilizing this those two columns. So true. The rule for a conditional is it's always true unless the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. So this, we have true to true, so that's true. True to false, that's false, right? False to true is actually true, and true to false is false. So in the final analysis of this proposition, this is, these are the truth values we have come up with. It, whoops, I'm sorry, this row right here, okay? Um, so I'm going to stop it here um, and then start another video, okay?